Welcome back! And welcome back to Miyazaki March. Last time we spoke of a movie which isn't really that much of a Miyazaki movie even though he directed it. It was even in the movie itself wasn't from his vision and he was doing a pay job on an already pre-existing concept. This time, however, in the first movie, both written and directed by Miyazaki, it couldn't be more obvious that this is indeed a Miyazaki movie. The second movie Miyazaki directed, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. And take a moment to appreciate this. This movie is the reason for Miyazaki Mask the first time around. I just happened to see it on a DVD shelf and it had the name Miyazaki on it. I had never heard of that movie before, but thought, well, I might as well give it a go. And the movie blew me away. Wow. The thing about his movies are that they seem to be very personal and there are some very specific things he wants to say with his movies and his stories. Three big subjects in particular he seems to have strong opinions about and want to talk about is feminism, meaning how he thinks that women should be presented in movies and I'm going to be more into that later because I think he got something. He got things that I have been saying way before I was even born. This movie is from before I was born and he got it right here, but we'll talk more about it later. So feminism, the environment, anti-war messages, and uh, well those are the things he has opinions about. Then of course we have the last thing where you think me as like you have to think about this. His that is flying right there. So, the first movie where he had that much creative control, he both got to write and direct. Which one of these are we going to focus on? Why do we have to pick? Why, pick? Why not just take all of them and just, you know, use all of them at once? Why hold back? Just handling one of these subjects is pretty damn difficult and must be handled with honesty and delicacy. You need to be a little bit on the nose and a little edgy for it to mean anything, but you can't be too fake or thick witted or it'll feel stupid and fake and force stuff down your throat and we don't like that. Miyazaki has handled all three subjects a number of times. And we've got to give kudos. He does not only handle those subjects well, he handles them like nobody else can and use them to tell big, grand moral tales with an honest opinion and message he wants to tell, coupled with stunning visuals, great believable characters, intriguing, interesting worlds. And this movie is no different from all of that. It is exactly all of that. The film itself is actually based on a manga that Miyazaki wrote at the time, but that manga wasn't a finished work yet. Thus, the film is said to be just an abridged version of the first few issues of that manga series. Though people actually had to tell me that on Facebook, because when I saw the movie for myself, I had no idea! You seriously don't need to read the manga to watch this movie, it stands just fine on its own! I had no idea there was a manga! Never did it strike me that this was an abridged version of something else. Though I was told that the manga is far better than the movie, in which case I just have to say, God I need to read that manga! 
This movie is fantastic, amazing. If that's nothing in comparison to the manga, that manga gotta be the best goddamn manga in the entire world. And yes, I want to read it, and I will, as soon as I find a way to buy it. I'll probably order it over Amazon or something. I will, I will, I promise, I'll read it at some point when I have it. I just don't have it yet. Anyway, the story follows the girl Nausicaa, whom is the princess of a little valley in a dystopian future society. In this world, our modern world ended already thousands of years ago because we basically destroyed our own world and some other stuff that is kept mostly a mystery. Which, you know, makes sense. How would they know? In this new world, the most of the land is swallowed up by a massive poisonous swamp that constantly spreads and threatens to wipe out all of humanity as it grows and grows. And humans literally can live between the poisonous air of the swamp that is slowly consuming the entire world. As well as the swamp protected by a lot of creatures, most noticeably the Omo, which is this gigantic, enormous insect thing. The remaining surviving humans has been divided up into different societies living around and is in constant war with each other for the limited food and space around that is growing less and less, smaller and smaller as time goes by because of that ever-growing swamp. Nausicaa though is, once again, the princess of this tiny little valley that is just minding its own business, living surprisingly close to the swamp but can survive due to the wind always sweeping over them from the ocean towards the swamp, hence the name the Valley of the Wind. Due to their location and their small size, they have just lived in peace away from the conflicts of the rest of humanity. That is until one of the other nations just plainly invaded defense this little village as they intend to use that village as a base for the destruction of the swamp, in spite of the warnings that any previous attempts to destroy that swamp has only caused the swamp to grow even stronger, even quicker. And Nausicaa, who has a special connection to all the creatures in the swamp, as she has an ability to call them and kind of, sort of, communicate with them, is horrified by the mere suggestion. It ends up with her being taken hostage, so they can have base in the city and is shipped out, now having both to discover the secret of the swamp, save her village and save the Ormu, and so much other stuff I haven't even gone into because there is so much going on in this movie and yet it never actually feels crowded but it's just a beautiful breathtaking experience. I was stunned, absolutely stunned that I had never even heard of this movie but when I asked I was informed that it might be because it's a movie from before Studio Ghibli was founded though you wouldn't know it the movie is amazingly beautiful and looks very expensive. It looks of true Studio Ghibli quality. Another thing that really, really surprised me was how much I liked Nausicaa herself. She is the type of character whom I easily could end up despising. A character to create to be one of those Perfect strong female lead who just always knows better just because. Which is ridiculous. Making a female character perfect doesn't make her a good role model because it just puts up a standard that nobody could ever live up to and it's not realistic. But when it's Miyazaki, that has never been an issue and absolutely not here either. Miyazaki has really understood how to write female leads and female central characters. He doesn't create perfect, flawless pictures of the perfect human being, never breaking a sweat and just always knows better, annoyingly much knows better. Which is kind of how female leads usually goes <coughs> Stephen Moffat in. <coughs> Which is both ridiculous and boring. Plus they're usually kind of angsty and angry and not very likable female leads. Again, that's just boring. 
but not with Miyazaki. They have a light-hearted, happy, kind personality to them. The thing you can give to female leads and have it be a big effect, simple female kindness and also a sort of vulnerability that, well, you should use that, don't try to hide it away. His female leads get hurt, they get conflicted, they have to go through hardships that hurts them and makes them cry. We see them cry, we see them get angry, but we also see them being very happy. We see them laughing with all of their being, looking things in awe and wonder like the audience around them, not trying to be cool or removed or anything, but just being very vibrant and alive with a lot of aspects to them that is any Miyazaki figure really, they are just vibrant and alive and just so full of energy and it's lovely. It is frequently featured on the list of the best female leads ever created in Japan. And I totally get why. She is now also one of my favorite female leads of all time. She is kind, but also gets compromised and do things due to her anger, which she comes to regret. She overcomes her own fears with her strong to do what she feels is right. Early in the movie, she watches her father get killed before her eyes, which makes her so angry that she starts killing enemies all around her, only to later realize what that anger did to her turning her into a mindless monster like the people around her that she hates. And that ends up being a great motivator that she gets that anger but refuses to ever succumb to it again herself because it turns beautiful things into monsters and that's how she relates to the Omu by the ending of the climax. And even with all of that going on, all this heartbreak and hurt and so on, she doesn't really get angsty but she understands what needs to be done and do all that she can in spite of her fear and hurt to save the valley and, and yet still maintain this wonder for this fantastic world that Miyazaki built around her. She's a very inspiring female lead and is the kind we actually need more of, someone who is indeed very human but follow her moral values in spite of how much it hurts. She's not perfect. She's just human, which is what makes her work. Having this same character in this competent hands and she would probably have annoyed me a lot by being too perfect and always right and always have the moral high ground and ugh. But in Miyazaki's hands, it's perfect and she's perfect and the movie would be worth watching only for her. But. It's also worth watching for so many other reasons. If not only just the massive experience it is to sit and watch something that makes you feel and awe and just look at this stuff. Wow! It's not one of those normal animated movies you just kind of watch it and forget all about it, had a nice time, but you know, just lay on the shelf. It's a movie that sticks with you and you remember it afterwards. I liked it so much that I at once watched it again and then again, but if I'd only seen it one time in cinema and then could never ever get the DVD again and never ever see it again, I'm pretty damn sure I would remember it for a very long time. That's how much I like this movie. Again, this is the movie that is the reason for me as I month because it made me want to watch all of his movies, including those I had liked beforehand, and talk about them and do this. Great job, Nausicaa. This movie was big enough a success that it helped Miyazaki helping co-found a new studio supposed to be outside of the mainstream anime culture where he could just do his own stuff. And after this, he did. So next week, we will be switching genres again as we arrive at Studio Ghibli that Miyazaki helped found and the first movie that Studio Ghibli ever produced. Also both written and directed by Miyazaki. It's a, a bit less epic in scale but still actually pretty epic and a lot of fun. Really funny movie. 
and um, film renegado or any other people who speak Spanish out there shut up about the title of the movie I didn't make that title up I don't even think Miyazaki did it's supposedly based on some book or something but Laputa the castle in the sky next time the agony booth is a most effective means of discipline